Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel, and today we'll take a quick look at DC Ohm's Law and power calculations by way of a series of illustrated example problems. This lecture operates under the presumption the viewer has a basic understanding of DC Ohm's Law and power as illustrated in the DC Ohm's Law and DC Power lectures, both available at the Big Bad Tech channel. If you haven't watched these lectures yet or only dimly recall their contents, please take the time to do so now. Mastery of DC Ohm's Law and DC Power calculations necessitate active participation on your part. As such, I'm asking you to please pause the lecture when asked to do so and attempt the example problems on your own. If your answers don't match those illustrated, feel free to rewind the lecture and correct any mistakes you may have made. Before we begin, a recommended accessory for this lecture is the visual aid showing all 12 permutations of DC Ohm's Law and the power equations. We'll use each permutation more than once during the course of this lecture. If you're super confident, by all means try it without a net and see if you're smart as you think you are. Given the numerous options available to us, it should be noted that there is more than one way to solve for these problems. Importantly, your method of choice may differ from mine, but our answer should be the same. Since this could get chaotic rather quickly, let's do this in three sets of four problems each. Here's the first set of four problems. Given known values for each scenario, see if you can solve for the other two unknown values using the most efficient and direct means possible. While you're there, see if you can use another algebraic permutation of either DC Ohm's Law or the power equations to check your work. Ideally, both methods should yield the same results. Express all answers in proper engineering format to the tenth place. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. Our first problem features a 40 ohm resistor known to be drawing 2 amps of current, but we're being asked to solve for the power and the voltage across it. Power is equal to current squared times resistance. Substituting in our known values yields a power figure of 160 watts. Voltage is equal to current times resistance. Substituting in our given values demonstrates this resistor must be experiencing an 80 volt drop. A supporting calculation verifies this result, where current equals power over voltage. Substituting in our calculated values demonstrates 160 watts over 80 volts does indeed yield 2 amps of current. Our second problem features a resistor with a color code of brown, green, brown, gold, known to be experiencing a 72 volt drop. We're being asked to solve the current through it and the power dissipated by it. A color code of brown, green, brown, gold means 1, 5 followed by 1, 0 or 150 ohms. Current is equal to voltage divided by resistance. Substituting in our given values yields 480 milliampers of current. Power is equal to voltage squared divided by resistance. Substituting in our given values yields 34.6 watts of power. A supporting calculation verifies this result. Voltage is equal to power over current. Roughly 34.6 watts, or 480 milliampers, does indeed yield 72 volts. Our third problem features a 12 ohm resistor known to be dissipating 1.2 kilowatts of power, where we're being asked to solve the voltage drop across it and the current through it. Voltage is equal to the square root of power times resistance. Substituting in our given values, yields a voltage of 120 volts. Current is equal to the square root of power over resistance. Substituting our given values yields 10 amps of current. A supported calculation verifies these results, where power is equal to voltage times current. Substituting in our calculated values of 120 volts and 10 amps does indeed yield 1.2 kilowatts of power. Our fourth problem features an element known to be dissipating 500 watts of power and experiencing 2.4 amps of current. We're being asked to solve for the resistance and the voltage drop across it. Resistance is equal to power divided by current squared. Substituting our given values yields a resistance of approximately 86.8 ohms. Voltage is equal to power over current. Substituting in our given values yields a voltage of approximately 208.3 volts. A supporting calculation verifies this result, where power is equal to voltage squared divided by resistance. Substituting in our calculated values does indeed yield 500 watts of power. Alright, if you made it through this first round without stumbling, I hereby promote you to the rank of guppy. Let's try the second set of example problems on for size. As previously, given known values for each scenario, see if you can solve for the two unknown values using the most efficient and direct means possible. While you're there, see if you can use another algebraic permutation of either DC Ohm's Law or the power equations to check your work. Ideally, both methods should yield the same result. Express all answers in proper engineering format to the tenth place. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. 
Our first problem features a resistor with a color code of orange, orange, red, gold, known to be experiencing 8 million amperes of current. We're being asked to solve for the voltage drop across it and the power dissipated by it. A color code of orange, orange, red means 3, 3, followed by two zeros, or 3,300 ohms, or more appropriately, 3.3 kilo ohms. Voltage is equal to current times resistance. Substituting in our given values demonstrates this resistor must be experiencing a differential of 26.4 volts. Power is equal to current squared times resistance. Substituting in our given values demonstrates this resistor must be dissipating 211.2 milliwatts of power. The supporting calculation verifies these results, where resistance is equal to voltage squared divided by power. Substituting in our calculated values does indeed yield 3.3 kilo ohms of resistance. The next problem features an element known to be dissipating 2.4 watts of power while experiencing 20 million amperes of current through it. We're being asked to solve for the voltage drop across it and the resistance. Voltage is equal to power divided by current. Substituting our given values yields a voltage differential of 120 volts. Resistance is equal to power divided by current squared. Substituting in our given values yields a resistance of 6,000 ohms, or more appropriately, 6 kilo ohms. A supporting calculation verifies this result, where current equals voltage divided by resistance. Substituting in our calculated values does indeed yield 20 milliamperes of current. Our next problem features an element known to be experiencing a 12 volt differential while drawing 50 milliamperes of current. We're being asked to solve for the power and the resistance. Power is equal to voltage times current. Substituting our given values demonstrates this element must be dissipating 600 milliwatts of power. Resistance is equal to voltage divided by current. Substituting in our given values yields a resistance of 240 ohms. The supporting calculation verifies these results, where voltage is equal to the square root of power times resistance. Substituting in our calculated values does indeed yield a voltage differential of 12 volts. Our next problem features an element known to be consuming 240 watts of power from a 60 volt source. We're being asked to solve for the resistance and the current. Resistance is equal to voltage squared divided by power. Substituting in our given values yields a resistance of 15 ohms. Current is equal to power divided by voltage. Substituting in our given values yields 4 amps of current. A supporting calculation verifies these results, where voltage is equal to current times resistance. Substituting in our calculated values does indeed confirm this element is experiencing a 60 volt differential. All right, if you made it through that last round without tripping over yourself, I hereby promote you to the rank of minnow. Let's see if you can try this third and final set of example problems on for size. As previously, given known values for each scenario, see if you can solve the two unknown values using the most efficient and direct means possible. While you're there, see if you can use another algebraic permutation of either DC Ohm's law or the power equations to check your work. Ideally, both methods should yield the same result. Express all answers in proper engineering format to the tenth place. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. Our first problem features a 1.2 kilo ohm resistor known to be consuming 3 watts of power. We're being asked to solve the current through it and the voltage drop across it. Current is equal to square root of power divided by resistance. Substituting our given values yields 50 milliamps of current. Voltage is equal to the square root of power times resistance. Substituting our given values demonstrates this resistor must be experiencing a 60 volt differential. The supporting calculation verifies this result, where resistance is equal to voltage divided by current. Substituting our calculated values does indeed confirm that this is a 1.2 kilo ohm resistor. Our next problem features an element with a 48 volt differential known to be dissipating 50 watts of power. We're being asked to solve for the current through it and the resistance. Current is equal to power divided by voltage. Substituting our given values demonstrates this element must be drawing roughly one amp of current. Resistance is equal to voltage squared divided by power. Substituting in our given values demonstrates this element must have a resistance of approximately 46.1 ohms. A supporting calculation verifies these results, where power is equal to current squared times resistance. Substituting our calculated values does indeed confirm this element is consuming 50 watts of power. The next problem features an element known to be drawing 317 milliamps of current while it experiences a 25.6 volt differential. We're being asked to solve for the resistance and the power. 
Resistance is equal to voltage divided by current. Substituting our given values demonstrates this element must have a resistance of roughly 80.8 ohms. Power is equal to voltage times current. Substituting our given values demonstrates this element must be consuming roughly 8.1 watts of power. A supporting calculation verifies this result, where current is equal to the square root of power divided by resistance. Substituting in our calculated values does indeed confirm that this element is drawing 317 milliamperes of current. Finally, our last problem features a 560 ohm resistor known to be experiencing a 24 volt differential and we're being asked to solve for the current through it and the power dissipated by it. Current is equal to voltage divided by resistance. Substituting in our given values yields a current draw of roughly 42.9 milliamperes. Power is equal to voltage squared divided by resistance. Substituting in our given values demonstrates this resistor must be consuming roughly one watt of power. The supporting calculation verifies this result, where resistance is equal to power divided by current squared. Substituting in our calculated values does indeed confirm that this is a 560 ohm resistor. All right, if you made it through that last round and all the rest with your sense of dignity still intact, I hereby promote you to the rank of salted herring. This rank entitles you to one free item of your choice from the nearest IKEA. Just go in there and stuff whatever piece of furniture you want inside your backpack or under your coat and run out of there as quick as possible. That is that. In conclusion, this lecture examined DC Ohm's Law and power calculations by way of a series of illustrated example problems. Remember to review these concepts as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest and we'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your Lazy Lab partner about this resource and be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.